Hi, I'm Justin, DevOps engineer, and I give Jenkins two out of five stars. For more reviews like these, please click the link below. Jenkins was the first CI product my company used, so there weren't really any products that came before it. We saw Jenkins more as an alternative to get started with something like that, and it did for a number of years. We initially chose Jenkins for a couple of reasons. First, because of the cost. Jenkins is free. Well, at least free as in beer. It also has a number of different functionality plugins that are available through the community, so we figured that if there's anything that's going to be integrated with, Jenkins would probably be the ticket to do it. Getting people up to speed with Jenkins wasn't very difficult. The product itself is developed in Java, and we have Java developers, so a lot of what Jenkins was doing under the hood made sense to our developers. So at least for my environment, it wasn't too difficult to get up and running. If you're thinking about buying Jenkins or using Jenkins, you may look at the plugin ecosystem and say, wow, Jenkins can do anything. And to a certain degree, that's true. But the downside is the plugins are not always maintained, and they're not always done by the actual developers of the products. So, for instance, my company uses Mercurial, and the Mercurial plugin is currently up for adoption. That's a polite way of saying it's currently unmaintained. You have to consider, too, that Jenkins doesn't really scale all that well. In other words, you can make the Jenkins server bigger, but it doesn't really scale horizontally very well. So if you outgrow an individual instance, you may need to get used to maintaining individual Jenkins instances for each team, or each group of teams, or whatever the case may be. So it starts off simple, but between the plugins and the lack of real scaling, Jenkins can quickly become more comprehensive than it initially seems.